Hello and welcome to Fibertrek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my studio space here in the North Woods of Maine. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you this third in the series, Turning of the Year. I have a variety of projects to share with you, including an oracle deck project, an ornament making tutorial. I am so thrilled that my friend Sarah of Yarns at Yinhu was able to teach this to me and I can share it with you. If you are a patron of this podcast, a deep heartfelt thank you for the financial contribution you make. It is a huge source of creative momentum for me, and I am deeply appreciative. I am going to catch you up on my knitting and the possibility that I will make my Christmas deadline. I'm so glad you're here. Let's catch up. Let's leave the past behind Walk with me There's something else we need to find Say you'll go, don't make me wait There's no need looking for a easy way to work with my oracle decks on a regular basis. I do have the practice of kind of a bi-monthly draw and art journal spread, but I was looking for more opportunities every day to get grounded in spirit and also bring in my creative work. And so what I've decided to do is I created a little journal and I am going to draw a card a day not necessarily couched in a question or a problem. I'm going to draw the card and I'm going to create a color swatch. So I get this opportunity to kind of work with the kinesthetic, the painting, the sensory piece of the color, and of course, whatever comes up through the message in the deck. This is the Woodland Wardens that I started with and you saw me working with the seed and sickle. Not sure what I'll pick next, but I look forward to sharing with you how this unfolds.
last year I shared on the turning of the year series how I make my felt ornaments. I've been making these for quite a long time since I learned from a coworker. I do them every December and it is very much a part of my routine and seasonality and ritual. I love that I can use a bunch of old found items from my grandmother's stash and from projects gone by to kind of reminisce and I love the opportunity to practice new stitches. You can certainly head over to last year's episode to see a little bit more about the techniques involved and the stitches I use, but it is a really great canvas since it's so small to work with new stitches and to practice. I use sheep's wool to stuff my ornaments and I finish them with a blanket stitch. I'm so glad that I got to get some of these cut out and on the go. A lot of times I'll put together little kits that I can travel with since they're so portable. They make a great gift and they're very charming and certainly can be used all year. So speaking of ornaments, as I mentioned, I learned a new technique when I was on retreat with my friend Sarah in Pennsylvania, and it involves creating your own fabric and you use layers of scraps to do it and then you quilt it onto a backing. And in this case, we're using a craft felt. And I thought this was a really wonderful technique for using up all of the scraps and you can finish your edges, you can use yarn and string and buttons. So again, kind of hearkening back, it really does capitalize on a lot of bits and pieces that you might have hanging around. One of the special elements you might need is a piece of tulle and the craft felt. And then you can pull in, as I said, scraps, you can pull in ribbon, bias binding, line, yarn, silk threads, whatever you want to lay down on the surface of the 2B fabric. So in this case, I've grabbed ribbon and leftover scraps. And when I say scraps, I mean you can use minuscule tiny pieces. You can use the selvage edges. So any embellishments you have hanging around, any little threads and as I said, bits and pieces, bring them on out and get them ready to lay down. Now I work a little bit more methodically with my fabrics and I do like to fussy cut the elements out when I am using the cookie cutters to kind of create the ornament. So some people just pile it on and put it through the machine. Um, you're going to use your machine to quilt it and people like myself <laughs> like to lay it out and have a little bit more kind of a flat surface and I like to kind of maybe create a little story here or there. You can see I'm using the coyotes and the moons and I like to fool around with the color placement and different textures like the ribbon, etc. So this piece of the process is very organic and can speak to whatever space you're at creatively, whether you're just in a lump it kind of space or you're in a place it kind of space. So I'm just going to build this out and it is okay to layer over other pieces of fabric. I like to keep it kind of flat. Uh, but like I said, in some of the tutorials that I've seen, people just pile it on and smush it down. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you are going to want to be able to put the tool over the top of this fabric and pin it and put it through your machine. So be kind of mindful of how high you pile it on. I am not going to make any recommendations about that because I have not done it and I've not used my machine to do it, but you can certainly take a look at Pinterest. I have seen people use uh, Salve Sulky on top and then you put it in water and it disappears. So there's a couple different ways um, and Sarah 
had generously offered to send me home with this tool. So I've done that, but I am thinking I would try it with the dissolv dissolvable um, sulky. So you would lay that down just like the tool, but in the end you would um, rinse it off. So this goes under your machine and you're just going to make lines, curved lines, straight lines, geometric lines, spiral, obviously being careful not to hit your pins, but there's no kind of methodology to where your line should go. You just want to cover a huge portion of the fabric and really they should be within a half inch to a quarter inch of each other. So it's pretty densely quilted down. You can see I look at it and then I actually put it back under my machine to do more. And that's really going to create a lot of texture and it's also going to ensure that the fabric when you cut it stays together and doesn't fray too much. So here it is. This is my finished um, densely quilted piece, um, three layers, and now I'm going to cut out some shapes. I'm using cookie cutters. You could just cut circles. You could freehand sketch onto your fabric and cut stuff out, or you could just use the fabric as a art piece if you wanted to hang it up or incorporate it into another piece. For this instance, I am just going to use it to make ornaments and use cookie cutters to create my shapes. I did cut some templates on my Cricut Cut machine in different shapes as well. Um, so if you have access to a die cut machine or Cricut machine and you want to create some templates, you can certainly do that. But I have found the cookie cutters to be pretty ingenious and accessible and easy. I am just using a black felt tip pen. You can use chalk, a hair marker, pencil. I wasn't too worried about getting anything on my fabric because I knew that I was going to finish it with a blanket stitch. Now I have examples without a blanket stitch and with an, I like to blanket stitch. So that's super easy for me to be like, I want to finish all of my edges, um, but it's not necessary. It's simply a finishing touch. And of course you could embellish this even more. You could add buttons or beads. Um, you could hand stitch applique onto it. So um, it really just becomes a canvas uh, for you to work with. So I finish my little heart in blanket stitch in navy blue thread. And I had used a, a sample pack of linens that Sarah had got to do that particular piece of fabric. I had so much fun. I didn't even want to cut it up. I just loved that finished piece uh, so much. So I have enjoyed fooling around with this technique. It's not the felt and, you know, kind of hand embroidery, etc. Uh, but I definitely like the texture of it and I like being able to use lots of different scraps. Now to finish mine, I just used a button uh, at the center. And of course you could use a bead or a button or you could just run a piece of yarn through. I am also gonna use wax linen thread as a hanger. But again, yarn, embroidery floss, silk thread, pearl cotton, etc. any of that. That's pretty obvious uh, to state, but I just wanted you to know, I really love this wax linen thread I found on Etsy. Um, and I like using it for hangers because you can kind of get some shape and it adds a little structural, textural element uh, to the overall finished product. So yeah, I've really enjoyed my ornament making this year. I hope you give something a try. And uh, please do share and let me know if uh, you give this technique a shot. So welcome to the fiber portion of the episode. I thought I would check in with you about where I'm at with my projects. I'm so glad you're here. I know that I often say in the intro a thank you, but I wanted to personalize it and offer that again here. I'm so grateful for your insight and your 
investment of time in coming on over and tuning in to what I have to offer. There's always a little moment when I hit publish and I am encouraged, as I've always said, and humbled by your positive feedback and support, which really guides my interest and momentum and creativity here. So thank you. For those of you that support me through Patreon, a deep heartfelt thank you. I didn't realize what a difference that would make in, again, that idea of momentum and curiosity and um, using film as a medium to document and storytell. And I'm so appreciative of your investment, not only of time, but of your money. So thank you. If you are interested in what's happening over there, I upload a extra video every month. And in this episode or this season, I am going to be sharing some of my favorites for the year, what I'm thinking about next year. And I have uploaded a special uh, little highlight and tutorial on uh, making acorn house garlands. So there's a little extra bonus content that comes with your investment. And that is um, basically the only tier, which is $3 an episode. Typically I publish two episodes a month. Sometimes it's one, but never more than two. And you get a bonus uh, video. So anyway, um, a deep heartfelt grateful to all of you who have been with me through the year. And uh, I'm sure I can get more into that blessing uh, at the final episode um, coming up here after after my Christmas. So where am I at with my knitting? Well, I got that beautiful shawl off the needles and I'm a little bit bereft over that. I loved knitting that shawl and I loved working with Manchalope, like a lot. And I have enough to knit another project with it. And so I think it was Amy Beth was kind of talking about, um, she was commenting on my uh, yarn that I have in my studio, which just I just have because I have to love it. I have to see it. It is meaningful to me. It represents something bigger than what it could become. And she does it really quite eloquently. And um, she uses words like atomized matter and aura and um, space. And so I would definitely run over and check out her episode towards solstice, which. <laughs> um, is fairly recent and uh, hear what she has to say about the concept of items just being in their own beauty. <laughs> so thank you, Amy Beth, for sharing in that little discussion with me um, via our two uh, podcasts. It was a lot of fun to hear your commentary. So I really love that Manchalope, suffice it to say, and I have more of it. and. As that has gone out the door, I started to take stock of what I still have to work with. And I, well, let's back up just a little bit. You know that I cast on for a gift. And um, so I have had a lot of commitment and interest in getting this pair of half mitts off the needles. So yes, I have one finished and I think I'm on track to finish the second. These are uh, based on the scallopers mitts from Robin Hansen's book, My Favorite Mittens. And my brother really wanted something kind of Gandalf-y, Lord of the Rings-y. And I'm not partial to reverse stockinette as a texture or a material. And I think Gandalf has a pair of half mitts that are gray reverse stockinette. I know, super duper nerd alert. Um, and I think also in The Hobbit, a couple of the dwarves have a very similar kind of very structured armor looking kind of gauntlet. And so I opted to do the scalloper mitts in this seed stitch. And I changed out the yarn that I had originally planned, which was a Coopworth from uh, the Shaker Society, or I was guessing that that's what it was. I'm sorry, there is a feeding frenzy happening here with all of my birds and squirrels and stuff. And sometimes they jump on the screen and I think that means they want more seeds. So I'm kind of attending to that, or I'm trying not to. So I did again, like I said, do this in seed stitch. I knit the smallest size, I went up in needle size, uh, and I kind of riffed on, um, on the thumb gusset uh, to, as to what they had offered. So I didn't do, this doesn't look anything like what's in the book, because they do uh, a ribbing and then a 
plain stockinette. So I got one done and that took me two days. So like I said, I think I'm on track to finish the second, which I have cast on. Oh, I was talking about the, the uh, yarn. So I let go of that uh, Coopworth from the Shaker Society old stash and I am using stash or yarn that my friend brought me back from Chile and it is a really beautiful spongy plush structural lots of memory uh, so I'm I have a feeling it has some merino cormo root in it you know some sh something like that and it's in the beautiful chocolate brown so on the go pretty committed to that that's what I'm doing at night and until that's done I'm not sure I will pick up another project that being said the Kairuna is waiting for me. I still love this project a lot too. So I think once I'm back into it, I'll have another love affair. This I'm knitting with Tidal Yarns on her four ply. And this is a natural dyed indigo yarn. Um, this is by Ronya Hakalito, And I was uh, kind of turned on to the pattern as a gift um, from uh, Knit My Way Home, Donna Marie's daughter. And I am knitting the lace section, which I am kind of muddling through. I mean, sometimes my rows all work out. I do have stitch markers between each section to help me kind of recognize how many stitches I need there. And if not, I just kind of fudge it and keep going. So trying not to let that hold me back too much when I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to have 19 stitches, but I have 21. Hmm. So I just, Stephen West style, just delete or delete, just decrease and then increase if I need to so but overall the pattern is shaping up you can get a feel for it uh, and I think that it's gonna be really beautiful once it's finished I'm loving the texture I love the color it smells really good it's got all of the sensory going for it also I still am working on the J sweater and what really stalled on this was I needed to skein up more of the brown so this I'm knitting um, from a Norwegian yarn, um, um, Gamos, Gamosa Spouso. It's right here. Oh, how wonderful is that? Gamel Norse Spouso. There we go. Gamel Norse Spouso from Holmgard. And I purchased this when I was in Norway. And I am on the body. I probably have about five or six inches left to go. And that includes the hem. And then I can pick up for the sleeves. And the other sweater I have on the go, which has been, this has been a long you know, um, commitment uh, is my <laughs> uh, fox uh, sweater, which I'm knitting in Hillis Vogue, uh, Solia and Vilia, uh, which the white is the Vilia, and I am working on the hem and I'm just doing this in a garter stitch. Now in hindsight, as I look at this and I've been knitting with seed stitch quite a bit, I'm like, oh, I wish I had done it on seed stitch, but I'm not ripping it out. I'm just going to continue forward. I probably have I don't know, three inches left to go on the hem and then I can pick up for the sleeves. So get your act together, Sarah. And let's get it done. So that's on the go. The other thing that has been sitting next to my knitting area is the Trondheim Cowl by Sophia Capella of Sophia's Tales. And you might know her formerly as uh, Camo Bornean. I think she's gone through and rebranded herself. So that is who I am talking about. And this was a really popular uh, knit that she did. And I have it on the go in Cashmere People Yarns. Um, this is hand spun yarn from Tajikistan. It's hand spun there, hand dyed there. And this is, is it cashmere or is it like a blend? I don't remember. Um, one of the nice things is about the label on these is that it does tell you who the spinner is. Um, so Kashgora spun, this is Kashgora, and fingering weight, and it gives you the yardage, the color, um, a biography of the spinner, and I picked this up from Port Fiber, and so I am knitting the cowl in that, and I really would love to pull that back in because it's really, again, another textural delight, lots of... Um, easy rhythmic knitting, um, memorizable, uh, it doesn't challenge my eyes, I'm not squinting at a chart or anything, so looking forward to revisiting that. And then one thing I'm thinking about casting on over my holiday break is I knit this to Crofter's Cap when it first came out. This is in the Fula wool kit and I love this hat. Like I love this hat. And I think it's because I, I love Fula wool so much. 
and I knit it again in a colorway uh, set of colors that um, the uh, designer had recommended which was like in beautiful greens and coppers and turquoise and I kind of pulled that together from my own personal stash and it didn't it fit but it was kind of tight and my nephew fell in love with it and he wanted it so I gave it to him so I would like to get that uh, on the go I'm gone up a needle size and I've just again I'm using the same yarns that I used on the previous one for him this is a mix mash from my stash I've got some um, Lifelong Yarns here from Scotland, Jameson's, Jameson's and Smith, uh, Biche Bouche, um, I think this, is this Alice Starmore? Alice Starmore Hebridean, um, maybe some Fula. So it's kind of a mix mash to try to achieve uh, that same kind of color route. Uh, it wasn't available, the kits weren't available. I've been looking at the Woolly Thistle for a while and it, they weren't able to get all the different colors. So I've been waiting. Finally, I just dove into my stash and did my best to kind of reinterpret it and what I had. So I would like to cast that on. I, I kind of hankering for some color work. I love that hat. I gave it away. And uh, yeah, so I think that's something I would like to do over vacation. I think that's really it. I am so glad that you joined me on this edition. I have one more right after my Christmas. I'll be uploading and I will be featuring a little bit of maybe where I'm knitting and what I'm knitting, uh, but maybe some thoughts about what I knit this year and what I plan to knit next year. And uh, yeah, more highlights over on Patreon. I'm doing some of my favorite things from the year and just a little revisit of where I've been. So in the meantime, Many blessings to you and fond wishes. I will see you on the next edition. Take care. Bye.